Oh my goodness, if you have been getting so frustrated with the growth of your Instagram account, or rather the lack of growth, then this video is definitely for you. Because one of the biggest questions that I'm getting from a lot of people is, Pam, I'm doing everything that everybody's saying to do on Instagram, but yet, why is my Instagram dead? If you have been noticing a decline in the growth of your Instagram account, I'm hoping that everything that I'm going to be sharing with you in this video will help you to see why it's happening and of course what you can do to change it from a decline instead to actually growing and increasing in numbers and of course to show you how to truly make money using your Instagram account even if you have a small number of followers. So Instagram is extremely competitive right now. So in order for you to make some money, you're going to have to cut through the competition and all of the massive noise that is on Instagram. So in this video, I'm gonna be showing you the steps that you can take to get out there and start killing it on Instagram. But before I go any further, if this is your first time on my channel, I'm Pam Bessa and I run a brand called The Lucrative Lady. And I talk all things social media, sales funnels, and just building a massive lucrative business online and in fact this entire month I'm focusing really on Instagram marketing specifically so if that is the kind of stuff you want to learn we've just dropped a video a couple of days ago again all about Instagram growth so make sure you check those out before you leave and of course uh, do me a solid if you're loving this go ahead subscribe and like this video and even go ahead and share it so that more people can see this video and of course we can get even more views I would appreciate that so much. So I work with a lot of businesses and most of these businesses use social media to market and Instagram specifically a lot of people have been telling me Pam I'm finding it really difficult to grow on Instagram I'm finding it really difficult to get clients or to generate sales and so before I even break down the point I want to talk about the life cycle of social media right so that's Instagram Facebook LinkedIn all of them have a similar life cycle and if you're going to understand this specific life cycle you're going to really understand why there is a decline and what you have to do at each point of that life cycle so when all of these uh, social media platforms are first launch one of the biggest things that they are focusing on is on getting your attention right so the very first part of that life cycle is launch the purpose of launch is to get your attention in the process of getting your attention they're going to reward you with a lot of reach a lot of viewership etc and so you'll notice that anytime something new launches on the platform i.e when reels launched on instagram anybody who's using reels gets a lot of views a lot of reach because that part of instagram is going through the launch phase and so it becomes very very generous you know and that is why a lot of people who set up their instagram accounts like uh, you know i'm talking donkeys years ago even five years ago they have benefited from that launch phase of them posting and it going boom mini viral because Instagram was at a launch phase back then and so they benefited from it you know in contrast to somebody who's just setting up an Instagram account today for example or this year for example what you might be doing is you're looking at somebody who has millions uh, of followers or even hundreds of thousands of followers and you're thinking well how did they get that and how can I get it the truth is that they launch their Instagram account at a very different time to you and right now it isn't the launch phase in fact we are in phase three of the three phases so phase one is the launch phase phase two is the growth phase so the growth phase is when Instagram really you know got their act together and started to pick up a lot of steam started to introduce a lot of features and started to really focus on growing the number of people who are using the platform and so they were really focused on growth and again during the launch and the growth phase face because they wanted to grow they were rewarding a lot of the accounts with access with assets and with all of the possible tools to help them to grow because Instagram were growing and so they really wanted uh, people to have loyalty to the platform so again if you had set up an account way back during the growth phase it was so easy to grow and so now when people are saying oh Instagram has changed or Instagram isn't what it used to be you're right it's not what it used to be because right now it's not in the launch phase it's not in the growth phase in fact it is in phase three which is the money 
monetization phase. So let's talk about this phase. So what is the monetization phase about? Well, the monetization phase is Instagram's way of saying, hey, we're here to make a lot of money. So what they're doing is that they are working with a lot of advertisers. And as you know, or you may not know, but Instagram is actually owned by Facebook. So the people who own Facebook, Mark Zuckerberg, also owns Instagram and Facebook is a big monetization platform. And so naturally it is time for Instagram to benefit from that. So we started being able to use Instagram for ads. And so now Instagram is really looking for two types of accounts on Instagram. One is those who are running ads, which means that we are directly paying Instagram to run ads for us. And two, those who are allowing ads to be successfully ran on the platform. Now, the majority of people, i.e. yourself, you might be in camp number two. Now, if you are in camp number two, it means that Instagram is depending on you having a really uh, brilliant account, an account that one, uh, you know, gets a lot of people's attention, an account that keeps a lot of people's attention, an account that publishes content regularly. These are the three key things that they are looking for in an account right now because they are using the content or rather the mere fact that you are on the platform creating content. They are using that as their foundation for monetization. So now if you understand that, what it tells us is that if you want to benefit from Instagram's exposure, because right now it's more competitive, more than any other time before what Instagram is doing is that they are giving the reach the exposure and all of that they are pushing the post out to people who are fulfilling those three criterias ie there's a reason why people are following you which means that you are creating really good content and finally you are holding people's attention on the platform right so what they are really saying is if you can do all of these three key things, then we will reward you by pushing out your content to even more people because let's face it, you're helping us. So it's kind of like you scratch my back and I scratch yours. So that is essentially how Instagram works. So because Instagram is in its monetization phase, uh, they are working really hard on making money uh, essentially. So what they're doing is they're working with a lot of advertisers to sell advertising spaces. Now this means that they are giving attention to a very small portion of accounts. Now, don't worry, you can still benefit from that. You can still be part of that small portion of accounts. And in this video, I want to share with you five things that you can do or five ways that you can really turn your account around so that it's, it goes from being a declining account to growing. And of course, getting a portion of attention from Instagram. Because of that, you'll be able to generate sales, generate clients and really grow a massive uh, business. Uh, through Instagram. So let's dive into number one. The first point that I want to share is that a successful Instagram account stands for something, right? So you must stand for something. What does that really mean? It means that when we jump onto your Instagram account, we need to know that your Instagram account fits within a specific uh, category so that people know what to expect. So I've broken down five categories and I've got some fabulous examples to show you about some of the things that you can choose for your business to stand for and if you stand for any one of these things or actually a combination of these categories then you're going to do really really well on Instagram people will flock over to your account and of course it will help you to create content effortlessly because you know what you stand for so let's have a look at some of these examples now. so the five categories are number one information number two education number three entertainment Number four, edutainment. Number five, inspiration. And here is one outlier, and that is a combination of any of the five categories. So let's look at some examples right now. The first thing I want to look at is information. So now, look at this. This is at Shopify's Instagram account. Now, I've chosen this one as an example of information because Shopify is a tool. And I find that if uh, any Instagram account that's talking about tools or software or 
you know they own something or you know obviously definitely a business that people have to sign up to then they are mostly there for information purposes they're going to be focusing on giving information about this specific thing this software this tool this thing that they do right so if you can see there's a few things we can learn from this so you can see that they have quite a large following 890,000 followers are following this uh, uh, account following Shopify because it's a tool it's an information hub so if you want your account to be uh, to do really well having it as an information hub is very very powerful because guess what happens as I'm scrolling through you can see their post number one what I can see is that they're using a specific uh, color scheme or a you know a series of colors if we look at some of the posts that we are seeing at the time of recording this you know it's the black friday season so you can see that they're, they're sharing information about this season so if you look at this post over here to the right it says getting ready for black friday right it's a video okay um then you can see where u.s shoppers plan to shop during black friday uh, cyber monday 94 percent of u.s shoppers plan to shop online and 65 percent of u.s uh, shoppers plan to shop in store again information they're giving you information okay let's look at whatever uh something else that we can see look at this one here giving you information again nearly one in five u.s shoppers plan to spend more than last year on independently owned businesses again this is an account that knows their target audience they know that they are serving independently owned businesses so they're giving information that is suitable to their target uh, audience. If we scroll a little bit further, over here you see entrepreneur checklist, website tick, photo shoot tick, launch tick, another launch tick, customer service, right? They're giving you information of the things that you need as an entrepreneur. And again, it is of course entrepreneurs that use uh, Shopify. Let's move on a little bit further and see what else uh, we can see um, from their site. So over here it says empowering content we loved this week. So, I mean, I haven't opened this yet, but I can imagine that this is probably them spotlighting one of their members or spotlighting somebody who uses uh, their tool and, you know, and spotlighting them and encouraging people to probably follow uh, that person. Uh, here we are. They're spotlighting some other people who use their tool. So again, it's a lot of information on their, on their uh, page. And you can see that they're not doing anything extra special. They're just giving information, but you can see that they definitely stand for something. And because of that, they are rewarded with a massive following of 890,000 followers on their Instagram account. So that is the category of information. So question, is your Instagram account all about information, right? Or is it about something else, right? So it's really important to understand what category your Instagram account um, is or should be. The next category I want to talk about is education. And I have an example of this for you. So let's look at education. Okay, so I'm using ConvertKit as an example of this because I actually use ConvertKit and love at ConvertKit. And I know that I go to their Instagram to be educated, right? So ConvertKit is very similar to um, uh, Shopify where information is very similar to education because there's one thing giving information about something, but education specifically for me is where you are doing tutorials about this specific thing. You're not just telling, giving us information, but you are educating us, right? So you might be doing tutorials about your subject or if you sell a specific tool or if you, if you create courses, if you have a specific product or anything, if you're showing people how to use something, you are most likely educating them on that thing. And I really think that ConvertKit does a really good job of this. Now ConvertKit's, uh, ConvertKit's account is a little bit newer than um, Shopify. So they have 16.4K uh, uh, followers um, over here. So looking at some of their posts, this one really caught my attention and I love the caption on the actual uh, photo. It says, how Pinterest coach Cara, Cara Chase uses opt-ins and evergreen automations and funnels to grow your audience. Can you see that, right? It's education, right? So opt-ins and evergreen automations and funnels are obviously features inside of ConvertKit. So they're saying this is how such and such a person uses these specific tools to grow their audience. I'm educating you. They are educating you. Let's look a little bit further down. Here's another one that drew my attention. It says feeling weird about self-promotion as an author. 
Again, who are they looking for? They're looking for entrepreneurs, authors, experts, speakers, etc. Right? And it, and that's I'm feeling weird about self promotion. Why? Because promotion leads to people joining your email list, and so because they know that their ideal clients want to grow their email list massively, they know that a lot of them self sabotage or a lot of them feel really weird and icky about self promotion. So that's what this post is about. So they are educating you about what to do if you are feeling feeling weird about self-promotion. Here's another one that really caught my eye, right? It says, get a head start on, on your funnels with our new visual automations template. So as a ConvertKit user myself, I can tell you that visual automations is a new thing inside of ConvertKit and it's a beautiful thing. It's a huge thing. Oh, by the way, as we're on the topic of ConvertKit, I have an incredible training on ConvertKit right here on my YouTube channel. So when you finish watching this, don't run away. Don't go anywhere else. Make sure you check out that training because in there I show you exactly how to build your email list, grow your email list and all of the various tools and assets that ConvertKit gives gives you to be able to do that. So make sure you check that out. Now, back to this uh, video itself. So I really love this and you can see from their captions, I mean, look at this one down below, tip jar, a new way to monetize your audience. This is something, a feature inside of ConvertKit once again. So this is really, really brilliant. They're doing such a good job about educating you because they know that not, one, not everybody knows ConvertKit and two, not everybody knows what ConvertKit can do and three, not everybody knows how to use ConvertKit. So they are using their Instagram to not only attract new people, but to educate those who are already using ConvertKit and to really show uh, people who aren't using it what they could use it for. So education, uh, educating is just such a really, really good category. If you have some sort of product, a software tool, you're selling anything, start to think, can I educate people more about this thing? Because that's uh, a really good way to attract your cold audience, i.e. people who don't already know you. So category number three that I want to talk about is entertainment. Now, this is a category that I absolutely love and there are so many channels killing it in the entertainment category, all thanks to lockdown. And that brings me to the example for uh, this category, entertainment, and it's a, a young lady who I really love, and her name is Elsa Majimbo. Now, Elsa Majimbo, look at this, has 2.4 million followers. Oh, oh, how amazing is that? 2.4 million followers, and I know a little bit of uh, about Elsa's uh, background. Elsa is just uh, a young lady who pretty much uh, blew up during lockdown. You know, during lockdown in the middle of the pandemic when we were all home and looking for a reason to laugh, a reason to smile. If you scroll back on Elsa's page, I mean, let me do it a little bit slower. In fact, let me start from the top. Number one, she's got this eye uh, popping uh, photo of herself, which I absolutely love. Look at the colors of the background. I actually uh, created a video that we have just launched all about how to create an Instagram bio that can and one of the things I was talking about is uh, having an image that absolutely pops and Elsa really nails it um, here. But if you look at her bio, she, you know, you've got her name here. She said 15 times chess champion, professional bragger, comedian, author, icon, all of that good stuff, right? She's a comedian. And so even in her bio, you can see that um, she, you know, she, she's a comedian. She's there to make you laugh and she's not ashamed or afraid of it. It's entertainment at its best. Now scrolling through, a lot of people think that to do entertainment or to have an account that is full of entertainment that they have to, uh, you know, um, they have to be incredibly funny or they have to look a certain way. No, you don't. Elsa literally, I mean, look at this. She literally comes as herself. Right, most of the stuff that does so well on Instagram for her are the things where she's so unpolished. Right, I'm talking, I've just rolled out of bed type of look. Right, this is what people are loving, and in fact, the best videos of Elsa. And the reason she popped is because she was creating very, very short form content, you know, uh, you know, like 20 seconds, 30 seconds or, or less where she is eating crisps. I mean, that sound of just chewing, chewing crisps over and over again and asking a question and just laughing at herself. That's literally how Elsa uh, blew up because she came up with original stuff. She came up with stuff people weren't doing and she wasn't afraid to try new things. So looking through, uh, you know, just scrolling through her, um, uh, her feed here, it's very difficult, I must say, to see why 
this young lady has 2.4 uh, million uh, followers and is endorsed by massive amount of celebrities. I mean, I know that she's had interviews with Tyra Banks. She's had interviews with so many big names. It's hard to see. You sort of, with entertainment, you sort of have to go in and and play the videos and see what it is that she is doing right and why you know she's just awesome so if we look at this for example uh, this one has been watched uh, 816,000 times over 2,000 comments let's see what that looks like and <laughs> in rotation Monday set pan for Friday set pan <laughs> today's pajamas will be the clothes for the next two days <laughs> How do I feel wearing such pants and pajamas for seven months? Proud. <laughs> Damn proud. Where are my good clothes? I don't know. <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> I am I'm confused. I'm just as confused as you. Do I have to go back to wearing real clothes? Like is it a must? Like is it a must a must? Like is it something a must? I'm gonna pause that for a minute. That just cracks me up. Can you just see how, you know, original it is? It's her. She's taking the mick out of herself, out of the world. You know, what does it feel like wearing pajamas for a whole seven months? I mean, we all did that during the during the pandemic, right? That's what really what she's trying to say. Then she's chewing. She's got these crooked sunglasses. It's hair that is unpolished. She's just literally it's bed face. Am I right? And it's because of this that we all laugh because. It is just, um, it is just beautiful. So, I mean, go through her feed and really check out what it is. Why is it that she's being endorsed by celebrities and, and literally in less than a year has 2.4 million followers worldwide, not just in Africa, but worldwide. I'm um, really brilliant um, example she is for sure. So that leads me to category number four. The next category is actually a mix of two categories and I call this edutainment. Now, when we look at something like Elsa Majimbo's page, you might be thinking, Pam, I'm not funny. I don't know how to do that. It's okay. I don't do that type of content either. I love it and it works, but I don't do it either. There's another type of content called edutainment, which I want to show you. And I really love this account. The account is called The Good Quote, and she has 23.7 million followers. Now, let me just scroll through. Have a look at this. It's literally just quotes, right? It's literally mainly quotes, 90% quotes, right? And look at that, 23 0.7 million followers. But why is it that this account has amassed a lot of followers? Because it's edutainment, right? We all love something that makes us think. That means that and we are entertained by it. So a lot of people think that entertainment, such as what Elsa Majimbo was doing, the previous example, a lot of people think that entertainment is all about haha, -ha, making people fall over, laughing, and you have to be a comedian. Not necessarily. Entertainment is also something that grabs your attention because you're entertained by it. It may not necessarily make you laugh off the chair. It may not be ha 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 funny, but it grabs and holds your attention, which means that a part of your brain is entertained by the information. Now, when you when we call it edutainment, it means that it's both entertaining and it's educating as well. So we're learning something from it, which is why I've got this example for you. And I think that these, uh, these quotes really work. And this is a brilliant example of edutainment. So um, let's look at the first one, for example. It says, don't be afraid to lose people. Be afraid of losing yourself by trying to please everyone around you. I mean, is that something we can all resonate with? Yeah. And look at the number of people who have liked it. 51.9 thousand people and 185 comments. Of course, yeah. You know, we all love that. Um, let's find another one. Here's, what, here's another one that I like. It says, forgive yourself for accepting less than you deserved, but don't do it again. I love that. Can you see how it's educated? so you're learning something forgive yourself for accepting what you for accepting less than you deserve but then it says but don't do it again that's funny right you read that and you 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 know the last part you you can smirk or smile because that's a constant reminder don't do it again and if we open this let's read the actual caption that comes with it if there is one there is no caption it's literally just a quote how interesting it's literally just the quote right there isn't a caption that i can see that comes with it it's literally just the quote how interesting right so she doesn't even need to work hard right i mean i'm, I'm not saying she's not working hard of course she is but you see what i'm trying to say in that it, the quote on the image is enough for people to go aha right i'm entertained 
and I learned something, edutainment, you see what I'm trying to say? And because of that, we keep scrolling, right? We keep scrolling to read what is the uh, next, what is the next thing? Look at this one here. Emotionally mature people don't treat people badly even when they're feeling bad. You see that? We learn something. So you take something away. Now, because of this, you're going to want to bookmark this post. You're going to want to bookmark uh, this uh, uh, specific account because you, you are edutained. You are being educated and you are being entertained at the same time. And that is why I do love the edutainment um, category. I think it's absolutely brilliant. Absolutely brilliant. Now, the final category I want to talk about is inspiration. Now, you could call this one, you know, the, the you know the good quote, inspiration. That's fine. But I have a different one for you. I have Joyce Meyer over here. She has 3.9 um, followers. So Joyce Meyer is a, a, a pastor. Um, you know, um, she preaches in lots of different um, churches. Some of you may know her, some of you may not. I really love uh, Joyce Meyer. But why do I follow her? That's why I put her up as an example. I follow her because I'm inspired by her in many ways you know in many ways i am entertained definitely i'm educated definitely but i'm mostly inspired i'm inspired on you know my own walk in my own faith and all of these things i'm inspired because of her story the things that she has been through so a lot of people who follow joyce meyer follow her because you actually know her story and it's incredibly inspirational so for those of you who don't know uh, joyce meyer was abused when she was young by her dad right so that's a huge part of her story you know that she that she really uses to bless women and to uh, really uh, communicate her message right her message comes out of her story the, the story is the foundation of and so because of that inspirational aspect of her life she has ma amassed a lot of followers right and so you can also see from her content that she's trying to inspire you so she, she says here enjoyment is your choice I love that. Enjoyment is your choice. I always say this. Joy is a choice. Here she's saying enjoyment is your choice. Um, let's look some more. So over here she says God has what you need to keep going. Live without regret. And we know this is a video, right? So she uses a lot of video. That's another thing about inspiration. I love that you can use uh, quotes to inspire people. You can use images to inspire people. But I think where inspiration really flows is in a video. And you can see that in this account compared to the previous account where it was literally mostly quotes quotes right in this account where it's for inspiration she's using mostly video so this is a video this is a video this is a video right this is a video 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 she's using mostly video and she's inspiring you when she is using images because she's a philanthropist and she does a lot of work in various parts of the world so she's inspiring you uh, you know using videos using images and using all sorts of content right to really inspire so you know that it is an it's a page here to inspire you to do more to be more to be all that you know you are called to be by god so that's one of the reasons why i love this and i come back time and time again to her account because i'm always inspired to be a better version of myself so these are the five categories now the sixth category which is the outlier is of course a combination of those so you could say i'm going to do Edu education and entertainment which then becomes edutainment or you can say I'm going to do a combination of entertainment and inspiration or you can do information and inspiration so there's no hard and fast rule that says you must stick to just one category you can certainly have more than one uh, of these categories but what's most important is that you are clear on what the category is that you are clear so about. So that was number one, stand for something. Number two is show, don't tell. Show, don't tell. Now, a lot of the um, examples that you have seen is people showing you something, right? Through videos specifically. Now, one thing that I've noticed is that the accounts that are doing really well are accounts that are not just telling you what to do or how to do it, but they are showing you how to do the thing. So here are some examples on the screen for you. When it comes to showing and not telling, it's all about thinking, how can I create unique content? How can I take the content that already exists and dress it all up or make it seem unique or make it look a, or seem a little bit different. That's what a show don't tell means. So for example, if you sell makeup, you might see this image of makeup and you might use that on your Instagram, but that's not going to be as attractive as if you actually had a video of yourself doing makeup, right? Can you see the difference, right? When you see the image of makeup, you know, it's just an image of makeup, but when you show me, uh, you know, how to do the makeup, how to apply the makeup, now 
now you're not just telling me something, now you've got my attention and now Instagram is going to reward your account because not only have you managed to create something unique, but you've managed to catch the user's attention. What about this one, right? You see um, some hair products, okay? The hair products are there. You can either show an image of the hair products, but how about if you actually showed how to use the hair product in a unique way? What if you did that instead of just using an image? That would again grab people's attention, hold people's attention for a little bit longer. That makes it scroll stopping. An image, anybody can find an image on Google, but a video that takes a little bit longer to create. And because of that, Instagram is going to reward you with that reach. And then finally, again, let's think about food. If you have a page that's all about uh, cooking or food or health or anything like that, you could show your plate of food that you've eaten. Yes, you can do that. But what if you showed a video for how food was put together or food is put together or how, uh, you know, ingredients are used together. Now, don't, you know, you don't have to give away your secret sauce or anything, but you can show how things are used. And because of that, you are now giving a little bit more uh, to your audience and you are going to be rewarded with great reach for that reason. So always remember this, show, don't just tell. Nobody is interested in just being told what to do, but if you can show me how to do something, then you have my attention and you are going to be rewarded with my uh, attention span. You're going to be rewarded with uh, Instagram giving you even more reach. So remember that. Number three is be consistent. Now I know you've heard a lot of it. A lot of people have talked about being consistent and I've heard it and to be quite frank, I'm bored of that type of advice. So that's why I want to give you a unique type of advice. What does consistency mean to me? Consistency means that you have your own publishing pattern and you are able to stick to it. So whether it's once a week or twice a week or three times a week, it's completely up to you, but you have the ability to stick to it. But how? should you be consistent, right? I wanna give you the how. Now, one of the things that I feel a lot of people don't talk about, especially those who are creating content, is that there are three specific things that you must do if you are going to remain consistent on your content creation for Instagram or indeed for any platform. One is you've gotta set aside time for research. Number two, you need to set aside time for planning the content. And number three, you need to set aside time for creating the content. Now, where a lot of people get it wrong is that they just think, oh, I'm gonna create content. And then they get to creating content and they go, oh, what am I creating? I don't know what to do. And so the time that they had set aside to create the content, they find themselves actually a little bit lost and wasting time. That's what used to happen to me until I figured out that no, that no actually content is in three phases. It's research, and then planning and then creating, which means that if I'm going to do this successfully, I need to set aside time for research, set aside time for planning my content after I've done the research, and then set aside time to actually implement what I have planned, which is where the creating part of it comes in. So if you can time block yourself in these three key different areas, you're going to always stay abreast of your content and stay on top of it and be consistent. The fourth thing you can do you know, when it comes to being consistent is that you can also use automation tools to schedule your posts. So you can use things like Hootsuite, you can use things like Later or Social B. Any of these tools, once you have done your research, you've planned, you've now created, then you go ahead, number four, to now schedule your content. And number five would be to have fun right? Have fun with your content all the time. Because if it's, if you're having fun with it, you're going to create even better stuff. If you are bored of your content, it's going to show through the way that you create the content. So far I've shared three tips and I've got two more to share with you. But at this point, if you haven't already subscribed and you're still watching, hooray, please go ahead and hit the subscribe and give me the like so that, well, I know what's working and I know what kind of stuff to create for you because I do love creating stuff for you guys. So let me dive into number four. Number four is don't be boring. Don't be boring, right? Nobody wants to, uh, uh, you know, watch a video or watch or see any content that is boring. Think outside the box. So now I want to show you two examples. So I want to show you these uh, two pieces of content that I found and absolutely loved. Uh, I really love this granny video. This granny video is amazing. It's, it's gotten millions of views also, and it is just funny. I'm just going to uh, play just a snippet of it just so that you you can see why it is hilarious. I was gonna brush my hair, but then I said, Why? Put on a bra and underwear. 
But then I said, why? Don't give a damn, don't care. And that's no lie. Hey, hey, I asked myself why. I asked myself why. I asked myself why. I was going to shave my pits. But then I said, why? Wash the dishes, some clothes and shit. But then I said, why? I just don't feel like it, so I ain't gonna try. Hey, hey, I ask myself why. I ask myself why. I ask myself why. Da, 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 da. So a huge part of growing your social media account means that you're allowed to actually come off topic. Did you know that? It's okay to come off topic. It's okay to do something a little bit funny once in a while. You don't have to do it all the time, but you don't have to stick with your topic every single time. You can do something for the purpose of catching people's attention. That is why you see lots of accounts do the challenges that are going around, etc. And so I really love what this lady is, um, what this granny is doing. Let me show you another example of somebody who I actually found via shorts on YouTube and she does the same thing on Instagram, etc. And um, uh, this is actually uh, a singer that I found, but I loved how even though her, um, her her business or her personality is all about music and singing, etc., I love how she came off topic and created uh, this specific um, uh, piece of content, which has nothing to do with music, but has a big, bold personality in it. Let's take a look. What's up, guys? It's your girl, Lisa, and I am back, giving back to the world like I always do. Today, you guys, I volunteered at the elderly home and I actually have a person with me. My buddy's name is Earl, and he is pretty damn cool. Ooh, Shut up, Earl, ooh, I'm filming. My bag. Okay, so guys, my I'm gonna go check on Earl and see what he wants and what's so urgent, but you guys make Benji sure me. you show acts of kindness to some random person, oh. and make sure you do the volunteer oh, work in your neighborhood. All right, bye, love us oh. for real. Oh, well. What do you want, Earl? I, I told you I was filming, now you just oh. messed up my footage, so I gotta start all over again. Oh, shut up. You walk at home. So oh. can you see what I mean that you don't have to stick to topic every single time. You can literally create something for the purpose of showing your personality, for the purpose of, you know, getting that like. And honestly, I probably would not have subscribed to either of these uh, people if I hadn't seen these specific videos that were a little bit different to what they normally publish. But I could see personality and I knew oh, these are my kind of people. I love their personality. I ought to follow them. So don't be boring. Number five, which is the final thing, stop making selfish content. Now I heard this first from Gary V and, and I love it. Stop making selfish content. What is selfish content? Selfish content is content that is all about you, right? With all due respect, your followers, even though they're following you, they want to see what inspires you, what motivates you. They want to learn from you, take something away from you. So therefore you've got to make your content and have it focused on giving and giving value and educating or entertaining or inspiring and you know fitting within those categories that I talked about earlier essentially making it about the other person and not about you yes of course when you run a business you know we want to talk about our launches we want to talk about our own products we want to talk about the things that we do and we want to invite people to work with us I want you to think about the 80 20 rule and that is that 80% of the time make sure that it's not about you it's about them and so therefore when you share that that tidbit that is about you and you're inviting people by that time you've already earned their trust and they are you know more than likely to follow you into whatever it is that you are doing or sharing with them and because of that you will most likely be then able to sell uh, your products and offers enroll clients make money on instagram and all of that good stuff now that was my fifth point i hope this was of value i know this video was a little bit longer and that i actually anticipated but when i I got into you know sharing the examples of all the different accounts um you know i just thought it would be more value uh, for you if we delved into it a little bit deeper but comment below and let me know you know what category is your instagram account and if you don't have one just say i don't have one pam right and let me know from the examples that i showed which of these categories would you use right now before you go make sure you check out this playlist which is uh which has everything concerning instagram and how to grow it really really fast so make sure you check that out and i'll see you in my next video see you then